Not everyone has multiple lights, scrims, floppies, bounces, all the stuff that makes films look really cinematic. So what do you do if you only have maybe one low budget light or even none? How do you shape light and augment light in order to achieve the best results and get a really great look? Let's get undone. No, wait, hold on. Yeah. Secure the cup. Oh, wait, hold on. No, no, no. We'll get there? Uh, I don't know what my catchphrase is yet. Hey y'all, my name's Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based out of Ontario, Canada. I split my work pretty 50-50 between photography and videography, and a lot of times I find that I'm in situations where I really just don't have any control over the light. Occasionally I also work as a grip on film and television sets, and that's all gripping is. It's shaping and augmenting light and moving apple boxes and dollies and cleaning stuff up and pretty much doing everything. Today I wanna to go through a few different setups and talk about how I'm shaping or augmenting light or maybe just using a little bit of extra light in order to achieve a bit of a better look and to shape the light a little bit more to get something I'm happier with. Before we dive in, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who's subscribed so far. This has been a really cool journey this last month and it's amazing to see people jumping in and getting excited about it. Uh, I do want to say if you are watching and you're not subscribed and if you haven't hit that notification bell that would be super helpful. YouTube doesn't like to push content of small creators out very easily so the more people that seem excited the more YouTube wants to share so that would be super helpful if you could do that I would really appreciate it. One other thing before we get started I know it looks like I'm wearing a Nirvana shirt but I, I assure you I am not and it's actually Nana Land. Do you guys know Nana Land? This is the greatest shirt I've ever received as a gift and the greatest shirt I've ever owned. So thank you to my lovely partner for getting it for me. So let's get started. We're gonna talk about three different setups and we're gonna look at the light, how we're shaping it, camera angles, and how things like wardrobe and choices of colors and that kind of thing can really affect the final image. First setup is this one right here. So we're gonna zoom out, we're gonna look at what's going on here. Okay, so this setup is admittedly kind of janky. Uh, we're just in my living room. This is the place with the best natural light in my house. Um, outside of maybe a little corner of the bathroom and the kids room which has a whole bunch of Minecraft posters and stuff everywhere so not the best place for me to be filming. So we'll talk a little bit about what's going on here. All the light is being motivated essentially by this window right here. So there's like a panel window here it's in kind of a U shape and we have three window panels. There's a large one in the center and two smaller ones just like this one here. That one has some curtains drawn over it to diffuse that light a little bit and then these two here, I actually took the curtains down to create some harder light. Now, the sky outside is pretty much entirely overcast. There's maybe a little bit of sun peeking through at moments, but it's pretty even light. So that means that I can control the light fairly easily based on what I'm seeing. Other than that, we have a black table here, but on top of that, I've angled a piece of foam board so that it's bouncing up. And you can even see on my hands underneath here, it's bouncing up a little extra light. So it's just filling in some shadows here. So I have all this beautiful natural light coming in. That's great. On top of that though, I really needed to augment that light and shape it a little bit. So what I did is I put some black muslin here and that helps to just kind of suck up a bit of that extra light and increase that contrast again between the light and the dark. I know my camera well enough to know that I can push and pull shadows pretty nicely without getting too much noise or any artifacts. So the more kind of contrast I can create in camera, the better because it, it saves me from having to do that work later. The other thing we have is this foam board here. It's white and it's bouncing light up a little bit. It's just kind of filling in a little bit of the shadows. If I go way over it, it'll fill in even more. But basically the idea was just to put a little bit of extra light on the face underneath. What I chose to wear in this and the colors and all the stuff around me are actually pretty important. So I wore a darker shirt and I've got blue denim over top. That's creating some separation from the background. If I just wore a light shirt, I would wash away in this a little bit. If I just wore a black t-shirt, um, I would see a lot of you know, big contrast, but I wouldn't see this so sort of subtle gradation. So like I'm going from light to dark and you can see all the folds in the shirt are actually helping to create some texture and mood. Behind me, um, I didn't really know what to do. We, we moved into this place fairly recently and we haven't really decorated fully yet. Uh, we haven't put stuff up on the walls. So I wanted to create some texture behind me to create some depth, right? So whatever, we've got this behind me and that's obvious, that's a light. It shows you I have a light, I guess, and I'm a YouTuber. Over here, I've moved a piece of furniture that we have and I've put some greenish, bluish drapes over top of it and then a red pillow. Those are kind of, you know, complementary colors. So that's just adding some, some mix to there. Uh, and it's pulling a little bit of, of light into it so that I'm creating this sort of like, you can see like dark, light, darker, light, dark. So I'm gonna tighten this back up, but I'm gonna use a few different pieces of foam board and different stuff to show you what I could do in order to change this even more. Okay, so we're back to our talking head setup. Now, 
I like the way this looks. I like having this sort of bigger split tone kind of style here where I have darker lighting on one side and lighter on the other. But what if you wanted to make it a little more gentle? What if you wanted more even lighting, but you only had the natural light to work with? Well, what I would do is I would keep this foam board here and I would probably grab another one and I would start to shift and play with the light a little bit. So if we grab this other one here, we put this to the side here, that is really lightening things up a bit. If I take that away and then if I put it back in, you can see how much lighter it's getting, right? So this is it with, this is it without, that helps a lot. Okay, so that's making it lighter, but what if we wanted to make it even more dramatic? What if we wanted to create something where we had a lot of darkness here? Now there's, there's a couple things you have to keep in mind here is that you can create tons of drama here, but if you don't allow that to affect the background at all, it can look a little weird. Uh, but for the sake of this sort of tutorial, let's talk a little bit about how we would uh, adjust the light to make it more moody and heavier and darker and that kind of thing. I think what we would do is we would just take a little bit of black here. So I have this giant thing. Ugh, it's really big. Uh, but basically using this to replace that white foam board, if I open this up, you can see it's just going to suck up a whole bunch of light. And that's just going to create like heavier shadows and darker things and that kind of stuff. So it could really help to create something more dramatic in your scene if you wanted it to. You would have to control some of the light spilling onto the background too, which you could do just by covering up some of those lights pretty simply, but if we're just focused on the talent in this case, which I guess is me, this is gonna help to suck up some of that light and just create more darkness where we want it. Sun started to come out, which is beautiful and great because it's February and I love seeing sun, but it kind of messes things. So I threw back up uh, those shears. So you could see uh, when I pulled out that there was a bit of the shears on the back. I just put it up for the rest of it. So it just helped to soften that light a little bit, get a little closer to what we had. But I thought this was a good opportunity to talk about sunlight. So if the sun does start to come out, you kind of have two options. You either try and act like it's not there or you try and lean into it. Now I'm going to do something I would almost never do, but it is a good tool to know that you have. So I'm going to grab a gold reflector. Nobody in the world likes gold reflectors ever, uh, and I get that, but we're just gonna talk a little bit about what this can do. This is going to put some very bright, kind of warm specular highlights. So if we put this just in that same place, it's gonna bounce a little bit of that light up and, and just warm things up a little bit. If we have sunlight coming in, it's being motivated by that and that can help to adjust things a little bit. One of the hardest things that you have to deal with as a filmmaker or a photographer or anything is just constantly changing light. If you're using only natural light, you have to work with that. Now, if your scene is supposed to be outside and people can kind of handle the idea of light changing a little bit, you just have to set that up. So you have to create a wide shot where people can see that you're outside and, and things are gonna change, right? So using natural light when it's variable can be very, very difficult. But if you use a few of these techniques, you can kind of lean into it rather than just trying to always control it and act like it's not there. Okay, so that's natural light and it's pretty variable, right? But what if the light is super, super flat and it's consistent? Now, yesterday, for example, it was completely flat light. It was gray outside. And that's really good because it allows you to control it, but it's kind of boring because the whole face looks the same the whole time. If you're trying to do an interesting shot of a person and you're seeing the exact same lighting across their face, it's, it's kind of boring. So what do we do there? We're gonna go through a couple clips that I filmed and, and kind of talk about how we shape some light. Okay, in the first clip, what you're gonna see is the light just as is with no augmentation at all. You can see it's pretty even across. You're seeing a little bit of darkening in the eyes, but overall, everything looks pretty even, pretty flat. Nothing too exciting here. We wanna shape this. We wanna work with this a little bit to make it a little more interesting. First thing I did was actually just a little wardrobe change. I threw in a hat. That helped to darken underneath the eyes a little bit and it helped me to be able to start shaping the light the way I wanted it to. This isn't doing all that much though. From there, what we did was we added some black muslin. The muslin is on the side, just like here. It's helping to create greater contrast from one side to the other. And that's making things a little more interesting. Let's switch it up though. I actually added a light. I had a little bit of extra light that I wanted to push in. And this is it with just the light, but no muslin. How does that look? Finally, we have a little bit of extra light pushing in on the side and then the black muslin to help create that shadow. And we're getting a little bit of almost Rembrandt lighting, right? And that's kind of what we're looking for. What you can see from all that is that we're creating a little more shaping and interesting contrast there. The other thing I did was I threw on that hat because I knew I wanted to have some different color separation. I knew if I had the blue hat and I had the yellow in the back, that was gonna create a nice balance and juxtaposition between the two. And we're gonna see that in some other clips as well. Okay, so that's daytime, but what about nighttime? What do we do then? 
Well, the first thing is you got to find a great location. I drove around for a while last night to find a location that I thought would have interesting light to show something. So let's go through it and let's see what that looks like. Shot list wise, basically we have me walking up. It's a wide so that you can get context for the environment. You can essentially see what it is that I am doing. I'm walking up to the staircase and then I'm going to walk up and I'm going to sit down. We're going to change angles a few times to keep it interesting. Uh, you can see the play of blue and yellow there. You can see filming from one side that's a little darker so that we're creating more contrast and we're creating a silhouette. And this final shot is really just, you know, shooting up to create kind of like a hero shot a little bit. So it's more contemplative and, and it's giving you a bit of a sense of like, oh, what is this guy all about? We're going to take it to nighttime, Chris. He's going to explain a little bit more about what went on in this scene. So one other option is because this foam board is nice and hard, what I can do is I can actually use it to cut the light almost like I'm using a, um, uh, like a flag or something like that. So we've already established that there's a, a, a railing beside me, right? So if I were to take this out of frame-ish, I can't do it because I'm only one person here, but you could put it out of frame at the same angle as the railing, right? And then you can just kind of bring it up until it starts to cut into your face a little bit or into the subject. And then you're kind of faking that shadow, that hard shadow coming across. And because we know in theory that there's a railing there, we know that a shadow could show up in that way. The problem being just holding it is gonna move around and a railing doesn't really move around. So the shadow would remain constant, right? But you can still just use this to shape the light however you want to, if you want some hard cuts um, and, uh, and that kind of thing, right? So something like this is very helpful. You can even put it above you and then go into total darkness and that looks really stupid. So that's something you can do, I guess. So a few other things to keep in mind when we're filming at night, I think there's a couple things that we have to our advantage. Firstly, we can control light more easily in theory because there's less of it. There's not as much lit up all around us that we have to deal with. We're usually dealing with pockets of light. So just go find pockets of light, right? There's a couple other things though that I think are really helpful that borrow from the reality of how we've been seeing movies for so long. And one is that we're okay with seeing grain in dark footage to a degree, like seeing a little bit of noise is not the end of the world. It is actually what we've seen for a really, really long time in film and it's, it's kind of what we're used to. So we don't have to worry so much about like, is it a perfectly clean image? Do I have like awesome low light? capabilities with this camera as long as it's not super noisy and distracting and it's not like super colorful noise we're kind of used to seeing that so I don't think it's the end of the world the other thing too is that the reality is we, we can underexpose you know nighttime is underexposed that's what night looks like to the real person when we're walking down the street and it's dark our eyes are their best to adjust but shadows get crushed out and things get dark and we can't always see everything and we can use that to our advantage. That's kind of the point of creating these kind of dark, moody scenes. Okay, I am so cold, so I am gonna leave it there and I'm gonna go back and film some more inside where it's warm. Okay, peace. So we have basically looked at three different scenes where we've augmented light in different ways in order to create the kind of look we're going for. We've got like a simple talking head set up here. We looked at being outdoor in flat light that's very stable but very boring and actually adding a little bit of extra light of our own in order to shape it a little bit more. Now you might not really have that choice all the time like when we're filming at night, but there we saw how there's sort of a power in using the darkness in order to create something a little more moody and interesting. But what do you do if you don't have any control over anything, you don't have any flags, you don't have any scrims, you don't have you know, muslin or anything like that. You literally can't control light. What do you do then? I was driving home from the gym today and I took a minute to pull over and use my old 5D Mark II to film something. So I'll show it to you here. But basically the idea is that if we can't find a way to augment the light, maybe we can think about how we can use color to our advantage. Okay, that footage looked nuts. So we uh, went back to the wall on my way to work. So we have to keep this quick because I'm gonna be late for work if I take too long. So uh, over to uh, Blue Wall, Chris. So let's just say you have like absolutely no control over anything right now. It's sunny, but it's cloudy. It's all over the place. What do we do with that? I, I don't have anything with me where I can augment the light, but I know I have to get a shot here because it's part of the spec or whatever, right? What I think we can do is we can talk about color theory at this point because I can't shape anything anymore. Really the only thing I can do is look at the things around me and say, what can I control? I've got a blue wall here. I've got an orange jacket. I've got blue underneath that. So I can create some color blocking here where I have like blue, orange, blue, darker, blue, orange. I, basically I can just create something a little more interesting to look at based on the color. 
right? If I film from the side, something like this, I lose a bit of that. But as soon as I move over to here, all of a sudden you're creating a little more uh, impression, right? We're, we're making something more interesting for you to look at. So if you really can't control anything, just think about your light and think about like, what can I do with the color around me and use color theory to my advantage? Okay, I gotta go to work. So uh, hopefully the message was there at least. And you can see that idea of like creating blocks of, of color is similar to creating blocks of light. And that's it. There's tons of other things we could do. We could talk about putting scrims over top. We could talk about creating like your own natural cove lighting and stuff like that. In fact, if we were to film from this side with the windows coming in and we were to wrap that light effectively, we could create kind of like a Deacon style cove lighting, which would be very cool. Uh, but there's so much you can do with natural light. The big thing is just figuring out, is this light going to be consistent enough? And do I have a backup plan for when it's not consistent? Thank you so much for watching. It's been really cool. Like I said earlier, if you just want to subscribe and, and hit the notification bell, that would be great. And I've got more and more videos coming all the time. I'm trying to do two a week and uh, tell your friends, go create something cool. Send it to me. I want to see how you guys are using light. What's your best tip for using light? Put it in the comments and, and we'll talk soon. Okay. Peace.